thing we want to encompass today is where is Islam taking the world in the future? And I want to start off with a few numbers here. Today, Islam is the second largest religion on the planet. It's got over a billion followers. It comprises one-fifth of the world's population right now. Every day, guess how many people are joining and becoming Muslims? 68 thousand people every 24 hours are becoming Muslim. At its current rate, there will be 2.2 billion Muslims on planet Earth by 2050. It'll encompass one-fourth of the world's population. Islam right now is found in 204 of 238 countries around the world, including the United States. And in the United States, maybe you didn't know this, and maybe, guys, you have better numbers than I do, there are approximately 1,209 mosques or Islamic centers.
in reading the English translation of Song of Songs 516. It finishes the description by saying, He is altogether lovely but what most people don't know, is that the name of that man, was given in the original Mejilat. Here is verse 16, and how it is written in ancient Hebrew, before introducing the vowels, in the 8th century. From the Hebrew Bible, on scripturetext.com. Here is the word in question. This word is made of four letters. Mem. Het. Mem. Dalit. Now when reading the word as it is written in its original form, with no vowels, it can be read as Muhammad which is the name of the Muslim prophet, or as, Mamad with no A after the H. According to Ben Yehuda's Hebrew-English Dictionary, it is correctly pronounced as Muhammad, not Mamad. So how we're going to know for sure, if it's pronounced as Muhammad, the Muslim prophet, or as Mamad, a random Hebrew word, the only way is to give the verse to a rabbi, and say to him please read. Here is the Song of Songs 516, and how it is read by a rabbi from a Hebrew Jewish site. Please notice, the im in Hebrew, is a plural of respect. Muhammad, 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 Muhammad bin Zedodi Vizer'i benot Yerushalayim. Here is the famous SDL translation tool which includes a professional human translation as well as an online translation. We're going to copy our Hebrew word of the Song of Songs directly from the Jewish site. It's the same site where you can hear the rabbi reading the verse in Hebrew. All links are in the description, so, we're going to copy the word and paste it, and ask, please translate. Are they going to translate the meaning of the name of that person? As the Bible translators did. Which is the praised and the lovely one or are they going to keep the name as it is? Well, see it yourself. Here is the world lingo translator, the result is the same, it's Muhammad. Hello, this is Berhain Selassie, the Orthodox Catholic One again. This is, uh, of course, Golden Sword Apologetics. And today's video is about uh, the Aramaic Gospels, the Peshitta text, and the word Muslim. And the fact is that the word Muslim, or the Aramaic word for Muslim, is indeed used in the Aramaic text called the Peshitta text, or Peshito. Um, not in the way you necessarily think it is, but uh, first of all, Muslim theology believes that Islam did not start with their prophet Muhammad, but it was the religion from the time of Adam, and that even Jesus was a Muslim. As evidence for this claim, some Islamic apologists will make certain assertions, uh, like the following. Uh, this is their assertion. You'll find this on uh, Answering Christianity and all sorts of Muslim websites, just copying and pasting each other. It starts off, let us look at Luke 640 from my NIV Bible. A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully fully trained, fully trained and aligned, will be like his teacher. The perfection here means a spiritual one. What the verse is saying is that knowledge is not what matters. The teacher or master is higher in knowledge than his student. But the student can be as high as his teacher or even higher by being a true mushlam or muslim a spiritually perfected or well-disciplined person. Let us look at what Jesus said in Luke 640 in the Aramaic language, translated into Hebrew as shown below. And if you go on the website, they'll actually have a link to some uh, modern uh, modern uh, Peshitta text uh, translation into Hebrew that's very modern. Anyway, uh, their transliteration, I had to write this out for myself because they just photocopied it or whatever they don't know how to type in hebrew but anyway it says 
אין תלמידי נעלה על רבו שכן קל אדם שמושלם יהי כרבו. First of all, they screwed this up. It's not, this is their main word and they screwed it up kind of. It says שם מושלם. It's actually supposed to be two M's with the M over here too, but uh, uh, of course they don't know Hebrew, so they can't transliterate it. But anyway, <coughs> their absurd argument is not saying that the Lord Jesus, when he was speaking Greek, Aramaic, or Hebrew, uh, said this word, or that St. Luke, when he was tra- in his, or St. Luke's translation of the Aramaic Peshitta text, has Jesus using this word, or it doesn't claim any of these things, but it claims that uh, a modern day translation of the verse into modern Hebrew from Aramaic uses a word that is similar to Muslim. Uh, biblical Hebrew in the Hebrew Bible never once uses the word uh, Shem Mushlam, and but it does use the word uh, this these four letters, which is which is pronounced different every time because the biblical Hebrew doesn't actually have vowels associated with it in the text. You have to know them, but it, anyway, it goes Mem, Shin, Lamed, and Mem Sofit. It's used 19 times in the Hebrew Bible. And 17 of those times, uh, which you can see right here, I can pull up the Bible software that I used for this. Um, actually, I know it's more than the... Yeah, here, here they are. Uh, you can go through them. You can go through them. Check. Here's all the times they appear. Whoops. Anyway, it's mostly found in 2 Kings. Uh, once in 2 Kings 22-23, 1 Chronicles, it's used four times. Ezra, it's used once in 10-29. Nehemiah, it's used dozens of times, a dozen times or roughly. And uh, once in Isaiah and Jeremiah. But anyway, <clears throat> those 17 times in uh, 2 Kings uh, 2 1 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, etc., 17 of those 19 times, it's simply referring to someone's name. It just says this, his name, uh, the son of Mesh, Meshulam, the scribe. So his na- right, name's right here, Meshulam, and then the scribe. So that's, and that's over and over. You can check it up here on the top of the screen. Over, Meshulam, 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 Meshulam. Anyway, that's, that's his name. He's not saying Muslim, it says Meshulam. Uh, two L's, actually. But anyway, uh, so vast majority of those times it's referring to a person's name. The only two that's not, it's actually being used as a word, is Isaiah 66, 6 and Jeremiah 51, 6. Uh, and let's we'll start off with Isaiah 66, 6. It's the Hebrew text is right here. But anyway, it's translated as, It is the sound of the Lord repaying. And then the word there is Meshalem. Two L's. And here I have the translation. Meshalem. 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 His enemies, all they deserved. So God's repaying his enemies what they deserve. And that's found in the NFIE, the same translation that they insist above. And uh, here's the Hebrew text. Kol al-Dadonai Meshalem. Or Meshalem. Meshalem, I should say. Gemul le'oi vav. So, I'll comment on that later. Let's go to Jeremiah 51, verse 6. It is the time for the Lord's vengeance. He shall repay Meshalem her what she deserves. So, repay here is um, the word Meshalem. Um, <coughs> and then you can hear, see the Hebrew text right here, uh, which I translated literated below. He et nechama hi la Adonai gemul me shalem lach. Anyway, we see the word meshalem is not mushlam or mushlim or mushlima or mushlima or muslima or anything like that. Uh, it's spelled, I guess, the same rough characters you would expect the word Muslim, but it's obviously not Muslim, and uh, this proves the word Muslim is never actually used in Biblical Hebrew, and the closest is a person's name, 
And the only other two times are in the context of God smiting people, smiting his enemies, which is certainly less than complimentary for Islam and its apologists. As we see here, repaying his enemies, uh, he's going to meshalem his enemies. So uh, that's not a very good uh, evidence for uh, Muslims pre-existing. Uh, but let's go on. Let's let's actually go to what the Aramaic text in the Gospels, the Injils as the Muslims call them, uh, say. Which uh, I'm referencing the Aramaic Peshitta text because that's what they used uh, in their argument above was actually uh, derived from the Peshitta text. Um, you can go on their websites and Google that stuff and you'll see that they're referencing the Peshitta text. Anyway, let's see what the Peshitta text says. I actually found the word the Aramaic word for Muslim uh, in the Aramaic text. And the word is Mushlamana. That's one of them. That was actually, that actually is the Aramaic word. And let's here's the first one I found. It's in Luke 6.16. And here's Lamza's translation from the Aramaic Peshitta text. It says, uh, And Judas, the son of James, and Judah, <laughs> From the valley of Wada, and we owe it to show gratefulness where the call is to Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ayyuhal 